It's so hard. You know, it's hard to believe. Yeah. Um, that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, X is gone. Um, you know, we always yeah. say this when we lose the great ones. Um, their music lives on and we can have that and kind of because the music chronicles so much of our lives. Um, and I think that's right. true. I do. I don't think that's just something. There's so much that, you know, we tend to say when um, we're coping. <clears throat> but I think that's really true. Um, we have a vault, if you will, of his greatest you know, there was a period, a period there where he mm -hmm. was on top of the world. Yeah. He had no peer. Um, and it didn't exactly mm -mm. happen overnight, that that portion of his incredible career. But when it did, it was like, I felt like everybody, even some of the other great ones, bowed to him and just knew that, okay. And he hit him back to back, number ones. Um, it, it's just, it's sad that, Age 50, that's all we get. Um, mm -hmm. But boy, did he give us a lot. He gave us a lot. He, he did. I mean, uh, iconic rapper. And you got to understand, he came out and got hot. This is right after Biggie had passed away. Uh, Tupac had already left us. And yeah. um, Jay-Z was coming into his own with Hard Knock Life. But DMX at that time, yeah. late 90s, DMX was that guy. Not just as far as being on wax and what he did in, in rap, but... At the box office as well, that's a great actor and a lot of the movies that he played in. And I'm gonna tell you, this this one hit me. This one really hit me hard. And it's still yeah, I could tell. hard for I me to tell. accept because yeah. you know, um there were um I was the other day when it when it happened on Friday, when people were uh, you know, mm -hmm. talking about it. You know. Um yeah. I just, you know, it, it seriously, this, 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 and, okay. and, and it still affects me, obviously. And um, mm -hmm. because he was a part of the life. And like you said, it's a soundtrack to your life. And it just remember, I remember mm -hmm. there was a certain part of my life, things I was going through and DMX was talking to me and I felt his pain. And I understood his story and I read his book and I knew the things that he was going through in his life and being misunderstood is something that I feel myself sometimes. And you have to deal with yeah. that pain. And I was fortunate enough that I was able to deal with my pain and get that out of the way to be able to live my life the way I'm living it right now and be blessed. And I'm just sad in a sense because he was a tortured guy. And a lot of people misunderstood him. And they just looked at, you know, what he was doing basically to himself in a sense. And not knowing that he was dealing with certain demons or traumas that were inside of him. And this is the way he had to medicate himself because of his past or what he went through when he was a child. You know, being abused by his mom and being introduced to crack at 14 years old, being tricked into smoking crack by a man that he trusted, uh, being in a, a, in a boy's shelter at an early age, being on the street and being raised by the street. And, but I want to remember him for the music, for his talent, for his great deeds, uh, for his contributions to everybody. He gave to everybody. And that's what I want to remember DMX for. So uh, I miss him. Obviously, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm still emotional. But once again, that hit me. You know, Don't listening think. to his music Don't over the think. weekend, it still hits me. And, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy for his contribution, and I'm just sad that he's gone. But we're going to do uh, a little bit more talking about DMS. we got a couple of people talking about his life and his legacy. But right now, Anthony Amy takes a look back at the late, great Darkman X, Earl Simmons. Born one week before Christmas in 1970, DMX squeezed a lot of life into his 50 years. Raised in Yonkers, New York, Earl Simmons rose to stardom in the late 1990s. He became the first music artist ever to have his first four albums debut at number one on the Billboard 200. Simmons developed his Jones for rapping when he performed for his friends during multiple stays in a boy's home as a teenager. After two stints in prison, Simmons took the art form even more seriously. And after appearing on songs of notable artists, including Jay-Z and LL Cool J, Simmons burst onto the scene in 1998 at the age of 27 with his first album on a major label. It's Dark and Hell is Hot debuted at number one on the Billboard 200. The album, which included hits such as Rough Riders Anthem, sold five million copies. By the time Simmons turned 29, he'd released another two albums, including the one that proved to be his most successful, entitled And Then There Was X. It was certified six times platinum and featured arguably Simmons' most popular hit, Party Up. 
He became a three-time Grammy-nominated rapper who won a pair of American Music Awards, taking favorite rap hip-hop artist honors in 2000 and 2001. X's music success was the impetus for a career on the big screen. Simmons had a starring role in more than a dozen films, including Belly, with fellow hip-hop legend Nas, Romeo Must Die, in which he starred alongside the late R&B icon Aaliyah, and a pair of movies co-starring Steven Seagal. DMX also made many guest appearances on television sitcoms, reality shows, and even a 2003 video game, Def Jam Vendetta. He was a larger-than-life personality, but he had his share of legal troubles after reaching stardom as well. Simmons was arrested for offenses that included drug possession, tax fraud, animal cruelty, and reckless and unlicensed driving. He claims he suffered from bipolar disorder, and his well-documented problems with substance abuse began when he was a teenager. Simmons' longtime attorney stated that X, quote, expressed the pain and suffering in a very unique way, and that he truly is reflective of a whole segment of our society whose pain and suffering go unrecorded. One hip-hop writer said that DMX made rap, quote, more confessional, more spiritually grounded, and he made it compelling not just to expose your demons, but really to express your devout faith in God. DMX's attorney remembered his client as one who walked into a room and lit up the room. He couldn't help making you feel good in his presence. Earl Simmons is survived by his 15 children. Yeah, he's a yeah, real one. Um, and, um, I'm definitely gonna miss him, yeah. Yeah, and a man of faith, that that's real, right? Uh, he mm -hmm, talked about it mm -hmm, so much. Mm -hmm. He was raised a Jehovah Witness. But let me just say this, um, I felt what happened before we, we went to um, the story of his life there. Um, and your breakdown, I felt it, um, because I, I already love you so much, and I understand you, I and you. I understand what it means to be misunderstood, um, mm -hmm. and to have that inner struggle, and even torture on some days. I think I, I, I know I understand exactly what you're saying there, and it's interesting because what you're really saying is, you know, you said you want to remember the music. Well, I want to remember it all. I want to remember it all. Yeah. Um, yeah. His struggles, mm -hmm. his pain, because that fed his music. I was looking mm -hmm. off to the side because on Valentine's Day, I, and I think I told you this, I was supposed to sit down with him, spend the whole day with him. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And it didn't happen because I was starting this job and I didn't think with the right. quarantine and everything, I'd be able to get back in time. But we desperately tried to work it out because he wanted mm -hmm. to be in Yonkers, and it was the whole story of his life. And I turned in my research um, to the network on Valentine's Day, and so I had read so much, you know, about the pain and the struggles he had been through. And as you talked about his, where the dogs came in, his friends, not mm -hmm. just dogs, not he just animals, exactly. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I felt your tears That's what were. He had that you were able to do your work, which had to be difficult. And he never saw the fruits of his work. Because I'm not going to say that he didn't do his work. You know, there's periods mm -hmm. where that was a mountain he was going up. But just, we want to celebrate. And I think as somebody who's as prayed up as him, Mike, he mm -hmm. is at peace. This is what I believe. Oh, he absolutely. is resting. Yeah. He is out right. of pain and he does want us to mm -hmm. celebrate get to achieve yeah. and write and be all the things he got to be in 50 years if it's not for genius um so let right. me just say that to you it it hurts me to see you and i could tell by the way you chastise people and, it, and you were right to do it prior to the family making that ultimate decision to remove life support to not jump and do that not get all over twitter right. and and declare him dead. Mm. Um, I felt it then that something was going on with you. So I just, I just wanted to say that I love you and let's Thank celebrate. Love let's you celebrate too. him. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No more pain. Yeah. No more suffering for DMX. My guy, like you said, he prayed for everybody else more so than he prayed for himself. And uh, we know his soul, mm -hmm. uh, and his, um, he's at peace now. Like you said, no more pain. So yeah, he, he certainly had his ups and downs, like like once again, like we all do, but he touched many lives sure. and made a lasting impact on hip hop culture. Uh, just once again, look at the outpouring of support from fans and fellow musicians over the weekend after his decks.
uh, death. To, uh, to shed more light on, on the life and death of DMX is uh, Matt Kirkpatrick. He's a professor of music business at Phoenix College, and he's also a DJ on Rhyme and Reason Radio. Matt, thanks so much for joining us here this morning. Uh, obviously, a uh, very emotional time for a lot of people in the hip-hop community. Uh, good morning. Uh, just in the community in general, music community in general, uh, as uh, us in urban society, in, in your words, mm -hmm. what, what did DMX mean to the hip-hop community, though, overall? Mm -hmm. uh, I, he, was, he was a legend. He was a larger-than-life personality. Uh, you know, he was, I, you know, I think that sometimes we are music um, legends and our, our, our music heroes, we feel like they're kind of untouchable. Like, oh, that's, you know, this artist over here. But with DMX, he was a man of the people. Like, he was, he was blue collar, just like the rest of us. And I think that's what truly resonated um, with, with the public. And in, and in, in hip hop circles, his ferocity, he, he uh, you know, I was lucky to get to see him on the Hard Knock Life Tour. And that I think mm. was like peak DMX, and you know, it, he made it hard for Jay to come on stage every night after him, yeah. and mm -hmm. that's what you want. Mm -hmm. But I think that that you know, in hip hop circles, you you knew what you were getting with X. You were getting a thousand percent intensity, and his rhymes were going to rattle your cage because his voice was so powerful that you were going to feel what he was rapping. Yeah, his voice uh, was one of a kind. Um, yeah, but when you you think about, yeah, when you think, though, Matt, about the music and some of the pain um, he'd endure, mm -hmm. and just his whole story, not just the pain, the dogs, the introduction mm -hmm. there, yeah. how much did he give us of himself um, mm -hmm. in the music? I, I think everything. I think uh, that's yeah. why people resonate with it. I think that... Mm -hmm. You know, it was he was a very open book. You, you knew that there was struggles going on with X. You knew that there was pain and suffering. You also knew that there were some happy times because that was in the music as well. He was, a, a, I think, he left it all in the music, and I think that was, you know, the gift. The gift is that he was able to, you know, transmute that pain into into making incredible music to help people. And he's helping people all over the world so, still. And you talk about the gift. And, and, and even though he was going through so much pain and so much was taken mm -hmm. away from him, he always found a way to give back. And not just through his music, but just in society, being in public, yeah. talking to people. Uh, uh, we've heard stories of him being in a Waffle House and helping the, 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 the employees mop. That's the type of person yep. that DMX was and doesn't get enough credit for. It's real. Yeah, I mean, for me, that I saw that personally. He lived here in Phoenix for, I want to say, five or six years. And there's plenty of stories of regular people just seeing him out. I remember seeing him at a Circle K. Um, he pulled up in a normal car, just him by himself. I recognized him. I, I, I pulled up on him because he has, you know, over the course of doing my radio show, when I knew he lived here in Phoenix, he would call the normal, regular um, request lines um, during our show and you know still to this day like you know his voice is so powerful it rattled the studio yeah. monitors mm -hmm. and and he would just he would just call to big us up like I I'm listening like I love your music you know I'm just listening I'm riding around the streets you know what I'm saying like yeah like you know and, and you know as a, as, a, as a host you don't necessarily mm -hmm. you know I mean I'm like here give him my personal number like come up on the show we always try to get him to come up on the show but he's like no nah, I'm just riding around I want to listen so um and then you know yeah. at Circle K like you know just letting him know that you know I appreciated his music and and like everybody came up to him and he said hi shook everybody's hands took pictures he made mm -hmm. he made everybody feel special it wasn't oh this is yeah. DMX it was just another person that happened to do some talented thing extraordinary things what yeah and he was just uh incredible and like we said that one of a kind mm -hmm. raspiness that voice that power mm -hmm. um and when we lose great ones like this you know people always want to mm -hmm. get a ranking where does he fall all-time hip-hop mm -hmm. artist but it strikes me that you know we lost Pac, we lost biggie so much sooner right and they left us with a bunch yeah. x yeah a little bit older 
at the top of his game though, it felt like there was so much more to come, but he had mm -hmm. interruptions, um, disputes, whatever yeah. it was, record labels, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like mm -hmm. he was on top for that short stretch. That's what we were gonna get. Um, do you feel like what I've chronicled is real? That, that, that part where he was on top was just um, interrupted a flashbang. Yeah, it, you know, the, the, those demons of, of struggle and, um, you know, interrupted some of, you know, probably the continuation of the best recordings of music in his life. Um, and, you know, that's the part that's hard is um, when you when you see that, you know, those gaps of time when he was struggling and um, dealing with all of the legal trouble, legal trouble and prison time that, you know, that could have been more, more albums and more music that mm -hmm. he could have been putting out. And, and that's hard. That's hard mm -hmm. to, 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 to digest because, you know, you don't want to see anybody, um, you know, wasting any of their greatness. And, um, you know, we got a lot of greatness from X and I, and I think that yeah. he was about to turn the corner and the second chapter yep. of, you know, greatness was coming. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what hurts as well. Um, and, and I do want you to tell us where he ranks in your mind being close and upfront in the music industry, but also is there, is there something else out there? Is there, did he leave us with some stuff um, that is vintage I, um, X? Yeah, I mean, for me, he is, he's high on my list because there's no one like him. There's, you mm -hmm. know, um, there's nobody like X at all. You know, that, that four-year stretch from 98 to 01 um, with those four albums is, you know, nobody else can say that. Nobody else can say they did that. Like, um, and, I, and, you know, there have been reports that there is an album that's done or he was working on music. I hope that's true, um, and I and I hope that we are we are we, we will be able to hear that. But um, you know, if we don't, and we have what is out, and and that that will be good. That will be good enough for me. I, I'm not I'm not mm -hmm. looking for you know you know lost tapes and and you know incomplete songs. I just just for me, if if this is the only music that we get from the, for the rest of the time that we are around, right. I'm cool with that. But if, if there is a new album right. and it's done and you know it's able to come out, I would love to hear a new DMX. Like I said, I think he was mm -hmm. turning the corner, after, especially after Versus, I think he was turning the corner into the second part, the second phase of, of greatness. And I, and I think that it mm -hmm. just hurts because we're not going to see that play out. Right. Right. He left us with a lot. Nobody, nobody had the energy or the passion that DMX had no. on stage, and we're definitely yes. gonna miss him. Absolutely, nobody. You yes. felt it. Yeah. Authentic. Oh, absolutely, man. Yeah, we we just love it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Matt. Um, thank, thank you, you for, very much for just giving us your perspective. Mm. Um, Matt Kirkpatrick, DJ, professor of music business at Phoenix College. Um, thanks for joining us on Start Your Day. And yeah, come back. Maybe there will be more music, absolutely. and we can keep talking about mm -hmm. him and celebrating him. Um, giving him all yes. he deserves. Thank you. Yep, look yeah. him up. Thank you. <sighs> all right. Thanks, Matt. Music icon Patti LaBelle was uh, one of many who gave her thoughts on the death of DMX saying, quote, I am so saddened by the loss of a beautiful soul, DMX. I remember when we recorded together, he and his wife had a room full of roses and a beautiful necklace waiting for me, and he was always so sweet. Sending my love and prayers to all of his family and loved ones. We'll miss him. Start your day as remembering DMX after the break. Mm -hmm. From music to movies, covering DMX as a member of the media was always a memorable assignment. Our next guest did just that for years at MTV News. You can see him now as the host of The Walkthrough on Twitch. I want to welcome in Shaheem Reed. And Shaheem, thanks so much for starting your day with us here on BNC. Um, we appreciate it. This is our, our opportunity to celebrate X. Um, mm -hmm. And I know part of your job was going to concerts, album listening parties. Um, there was X that shot to number one. We all had to grab his music, but there was the X who performed live. 
And that mm -hmm. was a whole nother universe. And I wonder if you could talk to us and take us through that. Well, first of all, good morning. Thank you for having me. Um, thank you for having me on to speak about DMX, one of my favorites. Um, as, as far as, as live performance, when you, when you talk about hip hop, X was right there at the top. Um, you have mm -hmm. you have Busta Rhymes, you have mm -hmm. KRS One, you have Kanye West with all the theatrics he does, and you have DMX. You know th those are really that's really the Mount Rushmore of live performers wow. when it when it comes to hip hop. Uh, to be honest with you, and X was somebody who really didn't need a hype man. He didn't need nothing. A, huh. a big um, multi-million dollar set. He would just come out there and immediately, immediately connect with the people. There's such a a, a beautiful um, piece of content floating around on Instagram where X, I think he was at Woodstock in 1999. And he was doing the Rough Riders anthem, and it was just a sea of people, mm. um, easily a hundred thousand people, just mesmerized and hanging on every single word that the man said. And this was uh, X at every concert. To be honest with you, like even at 50 years old. Um, X was going to these clubs, you know, this is pre-COVID, so maybe he was late 40s, mm -hmm. going to these clubs and still shutting it down. You know, he, he's somebody that has just such a, um, just a strong and immediate connection with everybody. And and you're seeing it on um, on social media. You, you just show, mm -hmm. you just show Patti LaBelle, just, you know, when when it comes to hip hop, you sort of think about maybe people that's younger and you know sort of people that that's maybe just totally totally entrenched in the culture. But you know, my mother just turned seventy five years old, and you know we was every day looking at the news, getting updates on X. She was just as worried about X as my brother, who was thirty three years old, thirty four years old. Pardon me. So. Mm -hmm. Um, X and even even the, the kids, you know, like everybody loved DMX. Yeah, the young and old, he energized everybody. And when somebody like Jay Z says that, you know, he had concerns about following DMX on stage, that lets you know what kind of legend he was on that stage. But let's talk about his iconic role and his place in history. Well, you know, are we being disrespectful sometimes when it comes to DMX, when it comes to rappers and lyricists? Because when you talk about top 10 lists, rarely do you hear him mentioned in the top 10 mm -hmm. with a lot of people out there. So have we been disrespectful uh, in a sense when it comes to what he contributed to the hip hop uh, community? I definitely think you have you have to put X in, in the top 10 as far as all time um, MCs. He... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a huge wrestling fan. This past weekend was WrestleMania. Um, I just had a chance to watch this beautiful, young, black queen. Her name is Bianca Belair. She just won her first championship in WWE. And she brings everything to the table, right? She has the athleticism. She has the strength. Mm -hmm. She jump off the top rope. She has the charisma. Her outfits are always great. She has a great story. DMX is a parallel to that. In hip hop, he has mm. all of the boxes. He has the charisma. He has the stage performance. He is a great lyricist, um, great music, um, presence, uh, a tremendous backstory, uh, unlike we've ever seen before. And mm. he has the, the hardware. When I say the hardware, I mean the plaques. DMX, first rapper to have his first five debut albums to go. Uh, not just platinum, but number one on the Billboard charts, mm -hmm. like number mm -hmm. one overall, not just number one rap album. This yeah. is number one, <laughs> you know, beating out yes. just Timberlake and you know all of these guys on on the pop charts. And we people may not remember this, but DMX came along in hip hop when we really needed him the most, right? We first heard mm -hmm. DMX on, on a major scale in, in, in 1997. We heard him with, with the locks. We heard him with LL mm -hmm. Cool J, Red and Method Man making his guest performances. And that that class of like 97, 98, where it was uh, D 
DMX. It was Big Pun. It was mm -hmm. uh, cannabis. Jay, Jay. These guys mm -hmm. were coming when it was a time where we had just lost Biggie and Pac, our two biggest mm -hmm. stars. Um, mm -hmm. God bless Puff. Puff was he was holding it down the best he could, but Puff was he 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 was giving us that really feel good dance music where you could go to the clubs yeah. really enjoy yourself and yep. we really needed that right because we had just lost biggie and puff and everybody was heartbroken yeah puff gets that feel good music but then it started hip-hop started to, to to people started to bite puff and it started to get was was going towards an area where it was getting a little too commercialized where we was really forgetting uh, about mm -hmm. the streets and x you know, along with those guys, people forget about Big Pun. Big Pun was there too. He, his time was really short, but yeah, that's a lot. Of... Helped, helped a lot, and uh, X brought Shaheen. the streets back. He brought the streets back to he did. He did. Shaheen, unfortunately, we're running out of time, man. We appreciate your contribution. Thank you for your memories of uh, DMX, man. One time, throw it up for me, man. Just give me a X. Know that. <laughs> in memory, absolutely. For Dog Man X, yeah. Earl Simmons. We appreciate you, man. Thanks for hanging out with us here on Start Your Day, remembering you, the Shane. legend, uh, DMX. Much more Start Your Days ahead. Thanks so much for letting us spend the last hour celebrating. Good Monday morning. Welcome to Start Your Day. I'm Sharon Reed alongside Mike Hill. Mike, how you doing? That was a great last half hour. I'm Hank. That was. It was good hearing stories about DMX and celebrating his life and his time. And, uh, you know, it, it's a lot of emotions that's going on. And, and, and I've been doing this for 25 yeah. years, and that's the first time I've ever done that on television, where I've actually allowed my emotions or my emotions got the best of me. But you know what? Sometimes you just got to, you know, be real with it. And, and there's a rare occasions where certain deaths hit you harder than others because sometimes mm -hmm. people even if you don't know them celebrities they feel like family members and uh that is a feeling that a lot of people around this country around this world felt losing somebody like dmx but it was even more so for me sharon because it wasn't just the fact that a person that i admired when it came to his music uh passed away but his story and once again the traumas and the pain and that's why I'm so adamant about us as a community, especially black people, to deal with our traumas and our pain and, and, and stop, you know, um, disrespecting or downgrading people who have issues when it comes to substance abuse. And look at it as a sickness and not look at somebody and, and start hating on them. You know, and you got to help these people because he dealt with his pain in certain ways. I've dealt with my emotions and my traumas in certain ways that wasn't beneficial to me as well. But luckily, once again, I was able to write my book to start my therapy and continue my therapy. And we as a community need to get rid of this trauma because you're not only hurting yourself, but you're affecting a lot of other people around there. I could have easily been in the same situation in DMX right now because I always say that if I, if I had not gotten help that I needed, I would not be here right now. So that's why I still have all wow. of that inside of me because I want everybody else to get the same help that I got. I'm sorry. Once again, I, I think just, it's a you know. no, no, there's no need to apologize. In fact, I think that release is a gift to the world, right? Instead of keeping it bottled up is what mm -hmm. you're really saying. That release is a gift to the world. And I think because you've said this a few times about the black community, right? Um, we're part of it. We love mm -hmm. it. Um, downing you know, those of us within that community who are struggling, who have demons. Mm. And by the way, we all have demons, whether you're dealing with it, with drugs, mm. food, uh, reckless behavior, sex, who knows? Whatever it is, you're finding mm -hmm. a coping mm -hmm. mechanism that perhaps is not healthy right. when you don't do, do the necessary work and that work can be scary. And one of the things right. that I love about the emotion I saw from you today is it couldn't happen unless two people were vulnerable, right? That's a vulnerable moment for you, sharing, being open and saying, look, see me. But you had to make that connection with DMX and it can only happen if through his art, he was vulnerable. You know, right. you can say there's right. tabloid journalism, there's people who turn on you when you're famous, even family members, this and that. But the truth is the facts are, you know about DMX's story his demons, the mm -hmm. childhood, mm -hmm. the mother, beatings, the whole thing, the dogs, all of it. 
because he mm -hmm. released it into the world. He you talked about it. He did. And he was getting ready yeah. to talk about it again, all of it, revisiting right. that. So that was part of his mm -hmm. therapy, whether it was, um, you know, formal or informal, that's what it was. But when you release your story mm -hmm. or your emotion, your authenticity, I think that's just a way to live, right? You can help someone, you can right, right. touch someone. Um, and a lot of times mm -hmm. people who attack somebody else's demons, it's, it's mm -hmm. really, if you lift up the hood, it's about insecurity. You right. may see some of right. yourself in that and not want to deal with it. It's better to close the door uh, with a laugh or a ridicule. So, but and, I just, if, if you don't the see, fact that, he, yeah, go ahead. No, and, and I was going to say, if you don't see yourself in it, you see a family member, you see somebody that you're close to mm -hmm. that's going through something similar so that you can mm -hmm. have feelings towards that person and, and maybe empathize in, in a way. But like you're saying, uh, even if DMX didn't come out and basically tell you his entire life story, even if you had to look it up yourself, it's something that you need to take into account before you judge somebody. Because this man also, it, you felt his pain when he was on stage mm -hmm. after every show, after every one of his albums, this man said a prayer, not for himself, but for his listeners, for his fans out there. And you felt that prayer, you felt that energy, you felt that emotion. So that's what I'm saying. So when uh, certain people that are going through certain things, they understand what another person is going through. That's why that, that, that connection is so strong with me. And like I said, I, 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 you, you, you don't think about it sometimes until the person gets sick and the entire time he was sick. I, I, I promise you, Sharon, because he's been so strong and res resilient and overcome so many things. I'm like, he's gonna pull through. He's gonna pull through. I'm not gonna give up hope. I believe in miracles. I believe God is going to work this out. He is going to pull through. X is going to be another redemption story. We're going to be able to talk about this. We're going to have the light. And unfortunately, it did not happen this time. But once again, we are going to cherish his memories. We're going to remember his contributions. And we're going to respect that man for what he brought to the table, for the things that he provided for other people when he didn't even provide for himself. That, to me, is the ultimate source of being unselfish because he gave the others. Like uh, you heard Swiss Beat talk about, you heard one of our guests talk about, this man didn't pull up in Bentleys even though he had millions and millions of dollars in the bank at one time. This man was still pure and who he was uh, is what he gave the other people. It, it, was, it was totally genuine. So uh, I, I, I'm gonna remember his memory and I'm gonna keep that legacy going just like a, a, a lot of, uh, of our celebrities that we lost along the way. I'm gonna remember the good parts of it and take that and put that into society and hopefully make the world a better place to live in. Yeah, I mean, rappers have egos. Rappers at the highest level, they engage in feuds. They have egos. And you know, that was part of X too, you know, with some of the stuff that's all part of the business. Mm -hmm. But it strikes me that his ego was not there when it came to everyday people, including himself, looking in the mirror, mm -hmm. right? And um, it's stunning because as we've talked to people who've chronicled his life, part of the music industry, that was a great, as I said, last half hour, something they kept saying, you can rank whoever you want, album sales, isn't that, doesn't seem fair because again, his was slightly mm -hmm. interrupted, his, his height of greatness. Um, but mm -hmm. when you hear them say he had no peer, that voice, there's really nobody mm. to like compare uh. him to. That to me is the high, right. That's the highest compliment. Right, right. Yeah. Um, there's mm -hmm. there's not really an imitator. And think about it. You know, at one point you had him, Jay Z, Method Man, all of them. You know, who were just mm -hmm. doing great things. And this is right after this incredible voyage we're on with Biggie and Tupac, and who can fill the void. And mm -hmm. his wasn't just a by default. He came and was you know uh, introduced raw. at that level where he absolutely belonged. Raw, right. So yeah. we're not going to forget him. We're going to remember him. Mm -mm. I look forward to seeing, you know, that, that final interview because it did take place without me. Um, and I, I can't wait to see it because he did want this. And I remember asking the uh, producers on, on, the, on the network, um, well, what's, what's going on with him? Is he, is he ready? You know, because I like to do authentic. I like to let it breathe. Mm -hmm. And I honestly, and mm -hmm. I've told you this, I don't think that it's celebrities 
don't want to tell their story. I think they don't want you to hijack their story. They don't want mm -hmm. you to fit it into this headline, this box. They want the room to tell. And then if you give them that room right. and you shut up and listen, right. they'll tell you everything. They'll tell you things you didn't yeah. even know or you weren't even going to ask. And I think he was mm -hmm. ready to just do that and be. And so, um, you know, God bless his family, his kids. On that he point, had a relationship. Real quick. That, yeah. Uh, they not only want to tell their story, a lot of them need to tell their story. They need yeah. to get it out. Mm -hmm. And like you said, I'm happy that he was able to get it out. And hopefully there's going to be a DMX movie down the line. You know, that's going to happen. Somebody, and hopefully somebody mm -hmm. does it right. Does just it justice? Please do, do it, it right. Justice. And, and, yeah. and, and, and it, it has it can't just be about his music. It's got to be about his pain. I need to see his pain. We need to see yeah. that pain of what he went through because we need to understand the man in order to understand what he went through in order to come to grips with how he died. If that makes any sense whatsoever. Mm -hmm. We got to get no, that in our mentality. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Anyway. It makes perfect sense. It's almost like going backwards. We fell in love with the music. The music doesn't happen without the man. The man who made the music doesn't happen without that pain. Right, because that's mm -hmm. what he's chronicling here. That's so he can only rap about what he knows and what he saw and what he experienced.